Um, Richard, welcome and thanks so much for coming. Pleasure. Now, uh, we have, I just wanted to describe the scale of the business and the man that's running it here. We've got Bunnings, we've got 750 odd coal supermarkets, we have Target, Office Works, hotels, you dig coal, you sell gas, you have safety equipment, fertilizers, chemicals, insurance. I might have missed something, but I figure that you go about your day, it's really hard to avoid a West Farmers business. <laughs> and my question is, you've got 200,000 employees and 50 billion or so in revenues. How do you run that business? Yeah, West Farmers, I think, has a, has a, a rich history of having diverse businesses. Mm. And, and through that diversity, we've developed really good systems and processes of understanding how they're going. And we've got a great culture in the group. And part of that culture is, is one of accountability. And so we've got very good people running each of our businesses at, at a divisional level and then down at an operational level. Um, so I, I actually don't worry about running the businesses. I worry about the, the direction of the group. Um, make sure we're uh, positioned in a financially in a strong sense, make sure that we know where we're going, make sure the right people are in place and make sure that the, the standards that we want to live to are being adhered to across the group. So, so my role, particularly if I've got the right people in place, is, is, uh, is not as onerous as, as your question might indicate. <laughs> so how do you actually physically or well, practically um, enforce that accountability? How often would you meet with the, the team, the, the target boss, Lorna? I talk as regularly as I need to with Ian McLeod or Lorna Inman or John Gillam, but I let them run their business. Uh, I mean, I'm a country boy and, uh, and West Farmers actually, West Farmers roots are from the country and um, I think we've got some common traits of patience, of perseverance, um, and so you learn that as a CEO. You learn sometimes to bite your tongue, um, and you learn, as Michael Cheney would say, to march to the beat of your own drum as well. And sometimes you learn that people who are in your ear have their own interests, and you've actually got to sift that from what you need to do in, in your job. Um, and all of that was going on over those periods of time. Um, so, so what I learnt was make sure you're, you're listening, make sure you're getting good advice, and make sure you're doing the work, and make sure you've got good people around you. And I think that applies all the time. You talked about, uh, it's about backing your judgement and actually almost finding a truth, the way, or sticking with your own truth. How do you go about cultivating the space that lets you hear that and stick with that? Well, I, I think being based in Perth is really helpful. Um, <laughs> so the investment bankers in the room won't like that, but it's a long way to come and see us. Uh, so, so we get to uh, we get to think a bit, and we get to do things out of the noise, and and I think that's um, that's really good. I mean, one of the one of the pivotal moments, and uh, we might have said this in that interview, mm -hmm. one of the pivotal moments in the Coles transaction was about two weeks before we were due to bid, I, I, I went for a run on, on a Saturday or Sunday in Perth and, um, and, and I, I was just getting a sense that it was going to be difficult to, to, to consummate a deal with the private equity groups on, on Coles. And, and so I was on my own just thinking about the whole thing and, and and came back from that run and I asked Tom O'Leary, who was running business development at the time, to run a whole set of numbers for me based on us doing coals mm -hmm. on our own. And, and I think that was just me taking time out from all the noise and the hurly-burly of the transaction and, and just trying to think, what's the best thing for West Farmers shareholders here? So a lot of your focus is, is talent and you're, you're yeah. looking ahead. How far? Uh, I think that's the biggest issue CEOs will face over the next 10 years in Australia is how you attract, and retain and develop people in an organisation. Mm -hmm. Now, only uh, two or three weeks ago, I took the leadership team of West Farmers up to Shepparton to, to look at some work the Indigenous Enterprise Partnership is doing with indigenous, the Indigenous community there. And, and we're looking at what we can do in terms of particularly employing more Indigenous people across West Farmers. So I had the whole leadership team. We're actually on a small bus. Um, I'm glad we didn't crash because that would have been a problem. But <laughs> we're all on a small bus. And and what came out of that trip, that three hours up and three hours back, was this wonderful interaction between the 
CEOs of each of the business because they actually weren't competing with it. You know, the, mm -hmm. we went on a road show. They weren't trying to tell their story. They were actually talking about something quite different. But but then started conversing on a whole bunch of other mm -hmm. things together. And it was the best piece of chemistry I've probably had from that team um, in the last couple of years. So, mm -hmm. so that, there was a lesson for me in that, actually. How much longer do you see yourself doing this, and, and what happens then? Well, no one's ever asked me that question. <laughs> the answer to that question is, as long as I feel I'm continuing to add value, um, as long as it, it still works for me and the family. So um, I, I think there is, there is a period um, and I'm not going to tell you that because I think that's between me and the board and, and my family, but um, I, I think I've got a, a way to go yet. Uh, I, I want to see the Coles thing through and, and I want to continue the, the, the great story that is West Farmers. Would you please thank Richard Goiter, the executive of West Farmers? <laughs>